My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My salvation comes from me. And my grievances hide the light of the world in me. Well, thank you so much for joining me and studying A Course in Miracles uh, Lesson 85, which is review for Lesson 69 and 70 in A Course in Miracles, published by the Foundation for Inner Peace. I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, and ready for our Monday, March the 25th lesson, of 2024. Lesson 85. Today's review will cover these ideas. First one, Lesson 69. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My grievances show me what is not there and hide from me what I would see. Recognizing this, what do I want my grievances for? <laughs> Again on that, my grievances show me what is not there and hide from me what I would see. Recognizing this, what do I want my grievances for? They keep me in darkness and hide the light. Grievances and light cannot go together. But light and vision must be joined for me to see. Grievances and light cannot go together, but light and vision must be joined for me to see. To see, I must lay grievances aside. To see, I must lay grievances aside. I want to see, and this will be the means by which I will succeed. If you really want to see, well, then the means is being shown to you. Simple honesty, letting go of what is a judgment on someone or yourself. Let go of those grievances. To see, I must lay grievances aside. I want to see, and this will be the means by which I will succeed. Specific applications for this idea might be made in these forms. So we're going to, he has three different sentences that are ways that you could use this during the day if you find yourself with a grievance towards someone or something. Let me not use this as a block to sight. The light of the world will shine all this away. I have no need for this. I want to see. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could say that when a grievance comes up. I have no need for this. I want to see. <laughs> My grievances hide the light of the world in me. And of course, you'll, you'll read that in the morning and spend the first half of the day thinking about that throughout the day. And in, the, in your morning, take 15 minutes to be reading it. Take three or four minutes to read it and kind of let it settle in. And then try to close your eyes and just let the Holy Spirit teach you. And then do that again in the evening for the second um, lesson for the day which will be uh, my salvation comes from me. You do that one in the evening and the latter part of the day, you can be thinking about it. Um, and I encourage you to, you know, use it whenever you have a grievance or whenever you feel a disturbed, your peace disturbed, whether, whatever you call it. If you have a, dis a disturbance in the field, <laughs> in, your, in your force field of peace, well then stop and take care of yourself. Ask God for help. Open your mind to the miracle. My salvation comes from me. Today I will recognize where my salvation is. It is in me because its source is there. It is in me because 
the source of my salvation is in me. It has not left its source, and so it cannot have left my mind. I will not look for it outside myself. It is not found outside and then brought in, but from within me it will reach beyond, and everything I see will but reflect the light that shines in me and in itself. These forms of the idea are suitable for more specific applications. Let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation. Let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation. You know, don't think your salvation is in changing somebody around you. Or your, your salvation is inside you. It's, it's from nowhere else. God's inside I will let this, I will not let this interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation. And the last example he has for specific application when you're feeling a disturbance, this has no power to remove salvation from me. This has no power to remove salvation from me. My salvation comes from me. All right. Okay, well, let's go look at our text reading, and we're ready for, uh, we're in the last section now, and I think we'll take two days to finish this last section. It's, it's almost four pages long, and uh, I think it'd be better we'll break it up into two, two readings. So, um, in chapter 10, the idols of sickness, the last section, uh, 10, the denial of God. Okay, and before we read it, What's going on around the world? Well, let's take a look. Uh, out of holidays and observances, uh, we've got today is Holy Monday, uh, beginning the, uh, the Passion Week of Christ, they call it. Uh, it's Greek Independence Day, uh, the, the Greek Revolution of 1821 was uh, one on this day. Uh, International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. International Day of S Solidarity with Detained and Missing Staff Members. International Day of the Unborn Child. And that kind of goes along with um, another day today, which is the Annunciation Day, or uh, also known as the Feast of Annunciation, also known as the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, it's it's when um, it's, you know in the in the in the Catholic tradition when Gabriel uh, showed up to uh, tell Mary that she was going to have a child. That's the Annunciation Day of the Blessed Virgin. Uh, and, then, and, and so International Day of the Unborn Child was a day that I think it was Pope John II just recently actually made a day to where, you know, kind of uh, to support life, uh, the unborn child. Uh, so he made it on the same day as Annunciation Day. Uh, and then, then we also have Old New Year's Day. You know, this used to be the day that uh, the new year would begin uh, uh, in, in many different locales before the Gregorian calendar. Uh, Old New Year's Day today, March the 25th, was January 1st, I guess. I'm, I guess that's how they would think of it, the beginning of the year anyway. International Waffle Day, Maryland Day, uh, there were two ships that landed at St. Clement's Island right off, Mar right, well, Maryland, and, and it was the Ark and the Dove, and they landed on 1634 on this day. Uh, National Cerebral Palsy Day, National Lobster Newberg Day, <laughs> that's a dish. National Medal of Honor Day commemorates those who have received a Medal of Honor. And National Pecan Day, 
and Seward's Day. And it's the day where William H. Seward uh, helped make the purchase of Alaska from, uh, from Russia in 1867. Seward's Icebox, they called it, <laughs> the, the, op the opponents to it. Uh, and let's see, uh, what else? And Tolkien Reading Day. For you Tolkien fans. All right, and let's see what else do we have today. Uh, in uh, Permaculture for Beginners by Carrie Mitchell, Chapter 5, Plant Placement. Uh, this next section is Elevation Planning and Aspects. And my take on the, the, the section, as you move on from general pattern details to fine details, consider how slopes affect microclimate, uh, cooling, uh, water, you know, your top of your slopes will have, will be drier than your, your bottoms. And those will all dictate different plants and different kind of uh, life that can grow on those different slopes areas. So consider slopes when you're planning. Understand how tree cover on, on steep slopes can establish a climate or can stabilize a climate and how frost pockets can be minimized, particularly at the slope bottom by not having trees there. Also consider changes in dynamics on the slope, such as perhaps more sunlight towards the top and yet drier ground while this is often reversed as you move down the slope. The essence of permaculture is to use this downward draining water uh, in your design. Careful planning is required to make the most out of slopes and harness the natural laws to create a self-sustaining ecosystem. Okay, and then on our uh, edible landscaping, our next uh, raspberry, uh, is the um, Carolina Everbearing Raspberry. It is a Rubus Ideas. Caroline is, oh, yeah, Caroline. Carol, I said, I might have said Carolina. It's Carolina Everbearing Raspberry. Caroline is a large, conic, well-flavored red raspberry, more disease-resistant, and with larger, earlier fruits than most Everbearers, sweeter fruits than most red raspberries, ripens August till frost at the nursery, but responds to warmer temperatures and ripens earlier farther south. Several plants are usually planted three foot apart in rows five foot wide. One plant space in the middle of a five foot circle of well-prepared garden soil. Canes average three to six foot tall, zones five through nine. So anywhere throughout the Ozarks, it'll do just fine. Okay, now let's go take a look at our reading now, The Denial of God, and take along with us our ideas today. My grievances hide the light of the world from me. We want vision. We don't want darkness. And where does that come from? It's an internal thought, an internal action. We don't have to change anything outside. My salvation comes from me. The denial of God. The rituals of the God of sickness are strange and very demanding. Joy is never permitted, for depression is the sign of allegiance to him. Allegiance to the uh, God of sickness, <laughs> the ego, <laughs> the imagination. Depression means that you have forsworn God. The word forsworn, forsworn means agreed to give up or do without, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Depression means that you have forsworn God. Many are afraid of blasphemy, but they do not understand what it means. And uh, the word blasphemy out of the Merriam-Webster is uh, show great disrespect to God or something holy. But he's saying that we don't understand it. Now, there is some Bible verses, a couple of them, one in Matthew 12, 31, another Mark 3, 29, where it's reported that Jesus said this. It may have been the way that his followers heard him say it, 
because I don't think Jesus wants to increase our fear anytime ever. <laughs> and this passage does seem to, to point to, I mean, if you take it the way the ego would interpret it, it's kind of fearful. Those passages talk about how blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. But I think what he's really trying to tell us is that, and he's going to develop that in this, what we're going to read today, that um, a misunderstanding of, of, what, of what blasphemy is, is what causes our problem. And as long as you hold, that, hold it in, disre- or in, in a way that he doesn't, if, we do, if we're going to deny God, we're going to, we're going to be depressed, basically, is what he's saying. That's what he's already said. Many are afraid of blasphemy, that, but they do not understand what it means. They do not realize that to deny God is to deny their own identity. And in this sense, the wages of sin is death. And of course, he's quoting out of uh, Romans verse, uh, or chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. This, the sense is very literal. So let's read that again. They do not realize that to deny God is to deny their own identity. And in this sense, the wages of sin is death. When you deny your own identity, you've sinned against yourself, against the Holy Spirit, against and 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 the result will be loss of life in the sense of uh, expansion, a creation, healing, awareness, vision. So they do not realize that to deny God is to deny their own identity, and in this sense, the wages of sin is death. The sense is very literal. Denial of life perceives its opposite, as all forms of denial replace what is with what is not. No one can really do this, but that you can think you can and believe you have is beyond dispute. Two. Do not forget, however, that to deny God will inevitably result in projection, and you will believe that others and not yourself have done this to you. You must receive the message you give because it is the message you want. You must receive the message you give because it is the message you want. You may believe that you judge your brothers by the messages they give you, but you have judged them by the message you give to them. Do not attribute your denial of joy to them, or you cannot see the spark in them that would bring joy to you. It is the denial of the spark that brings depression, the denial that uh, God is there, the spark of life, the great rays. It is the denial of the spark that brings depression. For whenever you see your brothers without it, you're denying God. Three, allegiance to the denial of God is the ego's religion. Oh my. (laughs) Allegiance to the denial of God is the ego's religion. The ego or the God of sickness obviously demands the denial of health because health is in direct opposition to its own survival. But consider what this means to you. Unless you are sick, you cannot keep the gods you made, for only in sickness could you possibly want them. Blasphemy, then, is self-destructive, not God-destructive. It means that you're willing not to know yourself in order to be sick. This is the offering your God demands, because having made him out of your insanity, he is as insane, he is an insane idea. This is the offering your God demands, because having made him out of your insanity, he is an insane idea. He has many forms, but although he may seem to be many different things, he is but one idea, the denial of God. Four. Sickness and death seem to enter the mind of God's Son against his will. The attack on God made his Son think he was fatherless, and out of his depression he made the God of depression. This was his alternative to joy, because he would not accept the fact that although he was a creator, 
he had been created, yet the Son is helpless without the Father, who alone is his help. 5. I said before that of yourself you can do nothing, but you are not of yourself. If you were, what you have made would be true and you could never escape. It is because you did not make yourself that you need be troubled over nothing. Your gods are nothing because your Father did not create them. You cannot make creators who are unlike your Creator any more than He could have created a son who was unlike Him. If creation is sharing, it cannot create what is unlike itself. It can share only what it is. Depression is isolation, and so it could not have been created. 6. Son of God, you have not sinned, but you have been much mistaken. Yet this can be corrected, and God will help you, knowing that you could not sin against Him. You denied Him because you loved Him, knowing that if you recognized your love for Him, you could not deny Him. <laughs> Your denial of him, therefore, means that you love him and that you know he loves you. Remember that what you deny you must have once known. And if you accept denial, you can accept its undoing. 7. Your father has not denied you. He does not retaliate, but he does call to you to return. When you think he has not answered your call, you have not answered his. He calls to you from every part of the sonship because of his love for his son. He calls to you from every part of the sonship, which is the Holy Spirit, because of his love for his son. If you hear his message, he has answered you, and you will learn of him if you hear aright. If you hear his message, he has answered you, and you will learn of him if you hear aright. The love of God is in everything he created, for his Son is everywhere. Look with peace upon your brothers, and God will come rushing into your heart in gratitude for your gift to him. And the last paragraph we'll read for today, paragraph 8. Do not look to the God of sickness for healing, but only to the God of love, for healing is the acknowledgement of Him. When you acknowledge Him, you will know that He has never ceased to acknowledge you, and that in His acknowledgement of you lies your being. You are not sick, and you cannot die. <laughs> you are not sick, and you cannot die. But you can confuse yourself with things that do. Remember, though, that to do this is blasphemy. The confusion is the blasphemy. Remember, though, that to do this is blasphemy, for it means that you're looking without love on God and His creation, for which He cannot be separated. <laughs> so let's change our mind and not hold on to such silly things as blasphemy or the denial of God or the the worshiping of the God of sickness that brings depression. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. Lesson 85. My grievances show me what is not there and hide from me what I would see. Recognizing this, what do I want my grievances for? They keep me in darkness and hide the light. Grievances and light cannot go together, but light and vision must be joined for me to see. To see, I must lay grievances aside. I want to see, and this will be the means by which I will succeed. Specific applications for this idea might be made in these forms. So my grievances hide the light of the world in me. You might say, if you're tempted, let me not use this as a block to sight. Or, the light of the world will shine all this away. And I ha or, I have no need for this. I want to see. And then Lesson 70 Review, My Salvation Comes From Me. Today I will recognize where my salvation is. It is in me because its source is there. It has not left its source, and so it cannot have left my mind. I will not look for it outside myself. 
It is not found outside and then brought in, but from within me it will reach beyond, and everything I see will but reflect the light that shines in me and in itself. These forms of the idea are suitable for more specific applications of this lesson, My Salvation Comes From Me, which will be your afternoon review today. And here's some specific applications when you're tempted. Let me not let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation, or I will not let this interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation. And lastly, this has no power to remove salvation from me. Okay, my grievances hide the light of the world in me. And my salvation comes from me. Your grievances hide the light of the world in me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. And if you're tempted, say, let me not use this as a block to sight. Or you might say, the light of the world will shine all this away. Or even, I have no need for this, I want to see. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. Let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation. Or you might say, if you're tempted, I will not let this interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation. <laughs> this has no power to remove salvation from me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. My grievances hide the light of the world. I cannot see what I have hidden, yet I want it to be revealed to me. For my salvation and the salvation of the world, my grievances hide light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own my salvation comes from me, comes from me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, comes from me. Well, thank you all again for joining me. And our word for peace is out of the Filipino language again. And this time it's, the word means peace for all. And it's kapayapon, kapayapon. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My salvation comes from me, kapayapon.